Barshins is brought to you by our awesome patrons. Thanks for supporting the channel. So, oh my gosh. There it goes. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new Barshans. Hi, Stuart. Hello, Barry, and hello, Dr. Lucy Rogers. Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's my favourite intro yet. I like that. We're, yeah, we almost like yeah. we rehearsed that. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, hi, Lucy. Hello. Uh, thanks for coming from Oxford. Is that where you're from? Bister. Uh, bis Bister? Yeah. Uh, oh, I was thinking Bister. of gravy then. That's, uh, Bisto. No. Just did the same Bisto. joke. Uh, and your version was funniest. So what was yours? Sulk. I was doing the Ah, uh, Bister. Ah, you, you must get that a lot, I imagine. Uh, no, when most people say, where's that? And then you say, Bicester. And they say, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I come from Norfolk where we've got Cossie, which is spelled Costessie. Posick, which is spelled Postwick. Uh, yeah, Haysborough, which is spelled Happersburg. Hell, which is spelled Lowest Off. Hell. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> Highway to hell. <laughs> local humour for you there, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, so, to people that are not sure who you are, Lucy, could you give us a little summary of who you are and what you do and why we've got some amazing things in front of us, which for the people using their ears we'll have to describe, but it's very exciting. I am an inventor and I make things that solve people's problems. But generally, I make things that are fun. So I look for fun problems rather than boring ones. Awesome. That sounds really cool. I like that. I, the whole, an inventor with a sense of fun. And effect. I love that. Uh, I'm what, quite loving the things on the table there are, already as well. Yeah. Before we delve into those, should we uh, have a shart call? Just, uh, oh, yes. Let, yeah. Let's uh, break the ice with some shart. <laughs> From the Eastern Daily Press, my local newspaper. Is this a local tier, is it? It is, yeah. I think we we've had this one before, Eastern Daily Press. Yes, yes, it's either the Eastern Daily Press or Eastern Evening News. We have a Western Daily Press. We do have a one in Bristol. Oh, so I can see how it's the East you. Side and the West yes. Side. Yeah, this on. is an East Side one. Mystery phenomenon affects cars in Norfolk Town. Okay. Mm. I was quite intrigued what could it by be? this. Then I read the article and I was less intrigued. <clears throat> a mystery phenomenon has descended on a Norfolk town after multiple cars failed to unlock. Right. See, if this is physical locks, I would be quite interested now, but I imagine it's not. But Reports of people being unable to unlock their cars using their key fobs and resorting to manually opening them... <gasps> <gasps> like cavemen. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> I still do that with my wife's car. The central locking buttons never worked, so we just have to still do it old school. Do you live in Thetford? Uh, I could, if mm. there's an incentive because to be in a paper. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it. I'm in the local paper. Being upset about not being yeah, able to yeah. open my car. I've made it, Mum. Live the dream. <laughs> The only problem with that in a, in, when you don't have central locking is, you know, obviously in the dark, you just, you, you, you're trying to find your key and unless you've oh, got a little scratching torch. scratching the door. Yeah, and, uh, got a nice you use your other hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when we have smart people on. I'm so quick. <laughs> that is, yeah, it does. Yeah. I think you did kind of get like a nice sort of gradient effect there on the car. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm presuming you have the key in your hand, not like in your mouth or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a bag of shopping or something like that. But then, yeah, I, I'm going to blame it on my wife. But yeah, it probably is me doing it. But yeah, Dear central locking is the future. So there was, was all across social media in Thetford this week. Uh, one confused driver, Mark Malloy, said he had three of his cars not work nor respond oh nice use of the word nor quite like that uh, nor respond to their for key Norfolk. remotes yeah. <laughs> Normal Norfolk. For Norfolk yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, nor respond to their key remotes outside his house on Wednesday that's very localised isn't it outside his house okay okay so Norfolk well, couldn't take it anywhere else could he because well, he well, that's, that's right yeah. wow that is yeah why have you good. done your research Mark <laughs> I, well I yeah. couldn't try that. I'll push it up the road and see <laughs> yeah. what happens <laughs> <laughs> well, he actually, he could have done because he can use it manually. Mark, you haven't done that. He hasn't uh, put the legwork in, is he? Yeah. Theory me. Well, in Norfolk's the county you're in. Yes, it? yeah, that's right. Big old ah, Ipswich and all that stuff. That's. So Suffolk, do you know where this is? is it, oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought no, Ipswich was in Nor North. Uh, uh, no, no, oh, that's I don't it. know. That's it's in the east side. South. Yeah. So do you know where this is? Yes, I do indeed. Yep. Yeah. He said. Was it you? <laughs> oh, she's ruined the end. Yes. <laughs> it was Mark Malloy all along. <laughs> like Mission Impossible. Just mission well, uninteresting. <laughs> the car won't start. <laughs> Hour and a half later, Tom Cruise has got it running. 
Um, he said, It wasn't a shock, just enough to really annoy as I had come home from work as my daughter's car was due to go to garage for work. Turned my car off, only to find it wouldn't start. It's a Rover 45. I like the way you said that as if that's an explanation. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's critical, though. <laughs> the wife's Land Rover wouldn't start and daughter's Punto wouldn't start. He doesn't use a lot of connecting words. He's quite hard to read, this guy. Ten minutes later, after swearing fluently in Icelandic, they all started. I wonder what that sounds like. I really hope that's a joke and he's not just, like, learnt loads of Icelandic swear words. <laughs> yeah. One day this will get me in the that's paper. That's a great way to get you out of trouble, though, if you, like, you know, you want to swear and you're like, well, I'll do it in Icelandic. The chances yeah. of offending someone is probably a lot minimal than doing it in English. So. Unless Depends. you're in Iceland. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Or Bjork's just walking past. Uh, yeah, or if you're actually in yeah. Iceland, the supermarket. That's the other thing. Maybe. No. No, no. no. no that doesn't work very well. No. I enjoy the theory. No. <laughs> Ten minutes later, after swearing fluently in Icelandic, they all started. I was told the army are doing signal blocking. Oh, is that for... Oh, I, I mean, I don't know how that works. Do you know how doing that works, Lucy? Signal... Ish. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, um, well, can I can I tell you? Yeah, yeah. Here's another yeah. thing. Um, when so the the car remote control fob works on radio waves. Yes. Radio frequency. And do you remember in the in the olden days when you had your car radio and you're driving somewhere and then you'd go out of signal and some mm. another radio would come in. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, or you'd have CB come over and you're not meant to pick it up. That's the kind of interference that can happen with radio. So it's possible that someone could be blasting out on a certain radio frequency the different sort of, different signals than right. the ones that answer your car. So it could be a stronger signal that would prioritise it effectively. Or, or just scramble. Yeah, just scramble or drown out the smaller one. Yeah. Oh, so it just yeah. weakens the actual... Set. Ah, yeah, wow. absolutely. Okay. A bit like if you're trying to listen to Lucy talking, but just right next to me is somebody singing really loud. Going, rah, rah, rah. I thought, you were, uh, be able to I hear thought that was actually top. happening then. I thought <laughs> 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 this was going to be a subtle joke. Like, so, <laughs> what about Rianne? Yeah, I hear them. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the great kazoo from the Flintstones singing to me that whole time. Is that a bloke? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Pavarotti. Yeah. He's, he's, he's so thin these days you can't even see him. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, I was going to say I wondered if that was just an excuse, but no, according to the Civil Aviation Authority, the Stanter training ground near Thetford was performing signal jamming exercises this week. Oh. Outside his house, apparently. Wow. Could also be used for drones, for, for stopping drones oh. or making drones. I wonder if they're doing that because of the whole Gatwick Airport thing with the yeah. uh, drones, whether they were testing some way of stopping that ever happening. You know how they... But they said there was they, there was a claim that the drones weren't actually ever spotted. Was that right? Uh, I, I really don't know what happened with that. I was sort of following it for a bit and then it seemed like nobody knew what they were talking about. So I kind of gave up. There was, really... there was sightings. That's all yeah. there was. All. The, I'm, yeah. I'm dubious. No one has seen Loch Ness Monster for mm. two years because of iPhones. And so if you see the Loch Ness Monster, you'd now mm. take a photo. Yeah. Everyone's got a phone in their pocket. Mm. Why wasn't the media splattered with here's my iPhone picture of a drone? Yeah, that's absolutely right. I saw yeah. photos of drones, but they were ones the police had sent up to look for the other drone. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it's um, hmm. because I thought there would be some sort of protocol in place where if that happens, yeah, I could just take it straight out. But I mean, I think yeah. that really just a up. kid with a really long stick, <laughs> yeah. But there were claims of like, oh, it's still in the air or still sightings. And I was thinking, I've got a drone myself and 20 minutes time in the air, max. And that, you know, it's yeah. a fairly good one, a DJI one. Could you it's... necessarily signal block? It could be one of these ones that's just programmed through GPS to go to a certain place, hover there for a while and then go back, I suppose. Yeah. If, they it, can if, be if it's, if it's, if it's they? Yeah. pre-programmed, there's... Really? Well, you can't jam it then. Yeah. Oh, so they can, it's impossible to sort of take it out from the signal or something like from... Well, if... Yeah, if you've pre-programmed something to say, go left, go yeah. 100 metres this way, turn right, go 100 metres Oh, because it would just sit way. there, the signal's it there. Just, and, yeah. It's already yeah. inbuilt, so it can't... Wow. Because that was the thing the media were kind of implying that there's somebody the whole time, you know, controlling it. Like, well, probably not, because they'd get caught very quickly, because they couldn't be that far away, could they? Yeah, the battery life wouldn't be that good. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It'd have to be, yeah, a crazy sort of custom build for it to even stay in Because it was like two days, wasn't it, or something like that? I, I oh. think it was supposed to be ones going up and down, but oh, as right. Lucy says, nobody seemed to actually see them. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> the thing. It's the best story ever. <laughs> Imaginary best, drones. Yeah. They yeah. can fly as long as they They were invisible. They had cloaking know. devices. Klingons. Klingon drones. Oh. We've got to the bottom of it at last. Right. You heard it here first, guys. It was Star Trek. That's yes. Klingons, isn't it? Yep. Oh, and he's I, getting I'm better. I'm getting better. I, I'm, I'm in training. Barry's never seen Star Wars or films. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen Back to the I'm Future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's right. Yeah, see? It's, it's, it's never going to take off, Steve. Back to the Future. Yeah, that's true. 
In fact, when Lucy dancing. was saying then about the radio, I was thinking of when he goes, he's listening to the radio and he goes in the tunnel and goes, oh, that bit was actually the, about this interference more than the actual losing. The yeah, signal. because the signal couldn't penetrate the tunnel, I suppose. Yeah. So do you think that's possibly it with that shuttle full of... Yeah, it does seem to be a bit cut and dried, although it has a very, very useless last nine. <clears throat> Actually, the penultimate line's pretty good as well. Norfolk Police said they had no reports of criminals using key jamming techniques. Key jamming to me sounds musical. I'm now imagining Rick Wakeman <laughs> coming along and distracting you from your car when you're going. The That's final it. line, the Ministry for Defence was contacted for comment. And that's it. Don't know if they gave a comment or got back to them. They haven't bothered to tell us that. But uh, yeah. they're just too busy working on the airport thing still. Just mm. oh, sorry, we'll get back to you. We're still looking for drones. Sort of thing. So a, yeah, which may or they're may still not droning exist. On. Yeah, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> have you have you seen um, this thing where they've got these people that are managing to get into cars now? Where uh, on the subject of that, where they someone will stand with like a larger, I don't know what it is, like an iPad thing, and they'll go by your house and they'll get the signal from your car keys to that, and then it bounces off and unlocks your car, and then they just drive it off. It was in someone in the paper about that the other day. These it's these Whoa. posh burglars that are coming in and the, <laughs> yeah, they like you know they wear a cravat or I don't know. <laughs> you spot them. Like, yeah. Oh, darling, get the iPad. I feel like a little theft is needed. <laughs> yeah, it's these. I think it's the ones that don't need a key. Where as long as you well, you need the key, but you actually oh, and you like rest it in a thing. Yeah, as long as yeah, you yeah. still can't. Yeah. Drive it. I mean, you yeah. just drive it out of signal and your car would stop. Oh, I think it's the ones... Yeah, I don't... Uh, so you're saying the iPad can read the signal, unencrypt it, uh, copy it or whatever, and then the iPad transmits it? Yeah, the, 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 it was in the sun. So it was in a, very, you know, in it's, it's, in a, wheel, it's in a yeah. top newspaper, but like... <laughs> <laughs> so the diagram was a posh burglar stood at someone's front door... <laughs> with cravat. And, yeah, yes, with a cravat, with yeah. With, with top radio hat. cravat, <laughs> yeah. which does need an encryption. Yeah, yeah he had his top hat and towers on all that, so he's like, I'm going up to park a car. And the diagram was, there, so there's a car on the drive, and I think it's one of these ones where as long as the key's technically in the car, it doesn't need to be in to, you know, get the ignition going. And then... Say you've left your your car your keys on the stairs. Um, it they stand at your front door and it's got a range of like two three hundred meters and it it picks up the signal from the the fob to that and then their their iPad thing they're holding then transits it to the car which unlocks the car and then they can get in using the signal. Surely they'd so. have to be standing around with their super duper iPad when you unlocked the car for it to be transmitting it. I don't. Oh, I mean, no, that's no, a bit suspicious. Aren't they, those, aren't they those keys that you just wander up to your car? Oh, so it's proximity. It, think it, so it's always transmitting. Yeah, and, it's always oh. transmitting. Yeah, and then I guess you can hotwire it and stuff like that after that. But I think really all they need to do Say is physically get in. And, I've got yeah. a 2001 VW camper van. Oh, oh, nice. And I managed to leave my key in Malta and my car in the short stay in Gatwick. Oh. Ooh. AA managed to break in the, through the door, made me a new key, absolutely no problem. Made the key, fits the ignition, turns on, couldn't uh, replicate the immobiliser key, the, the immobiliser bit, and couldn't start my car. Oh. oh. What you needed was a man in a cravat with a giant <laughs> iPad. Posh yeah. burglar service is limited. Just hit the yeah. immobiliser with the iPad till it works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, I'll have to try and dig the article out for that because I mean, that's I, interesting. It's, it's I'm the, it's the I'm new... getting a lead box from all my keys. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. And, and my car. I'm but, just going to yeah. drive it into a lead they box. They were saying, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good to keep your key. I mean, because, I mean, we have hang our keys fairly near our front door. I said that some households generally do. They said, you know, the, the best way of countering it is keeping it right away from your drive just to reduce that power of that signal. But, yeah, they did. There was a video on it and everything. So I just wonder whether. I so struggle to get Wi-Fi from one. Yeah, that's other. right. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it's like the hardest thing in the world for me is to get bloody emails in the bedroom, you know. And yet, because I don't have a posh criminal, yeah. I think posh criminals are the key. So yes, yeah. posh criminals of the future. That's kind of yeah. like if Michael Jackson was still alive. That's what yeah. it would be. Instead of smooth criminal, yeah. you have been hit by a posh criminal. <laughs> it's just a music video of him like <laughs> copying people's bank cards remotely from their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good impression. Well, thank you. I've been uh, working on that for no time at all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I, I don't know where we can start, Lucy. I mean, do, should we go into this first, or do you want to tell us how you got into, you know, inventing with fun, or is there like a history? You know, what was the? Where does it all begin? Maybe we should start there. <laughs> I've always been a maker, so I've always made things. Mm. Uh, my father was a carpenter. My mum did all the crafts, uh, sewing, embroidery, knitting, and so I was always doing some of that but you know when you're at school and you do okay exams they say do more exams and do left less crafty stuff and so 
as further on I got, I ended up doing a PhD. So, you know, it took me a while wow. before I finished being good at exams. Okay. Um, what was the PhD in, sorry? Bubbles. Sorry? <laughs> bubbles? Bubbles. I know how bubbles are made. Wow. That's amazing. Fluid dynamics. So is, it, is that Forma the... Formation of low expansion firefighting foam in firefighting equipment. Wow. That's I'm, incredible. I never knew the specific of it. That's yeah, very it's, um, yeah. making bubbles. Hmm. Wow. So we, we've got a doctor of rock music. Yeah, we did. a doctor <laughs> of <bubbles. laughs> Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, what could I get? I don't, I don't know. Um, um, back to the Future. Gammon. Gammon. Just posh burglars. Yeah, posh <laughs> burglars. <laughs> yeah. So my thesis on uh, posh burglars was very well received. Yeah. I think, as well. mm. wow. yeah. So you always so, had a family yeah. of makers. and so family yeah. of makers and my grandfather made and things. Um, but I then took a serious career-ish um, in bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, yeah, so going back to the bubble, how did that like... Uh, it was a company that made firefighting equipment. Oh, okay, right. They had this piece of kit that they knew it worked. So if you imagine a petrochemical fire, you can't pour water onto the top of it yes. because the oil will come to the top. Sure. Uh, so you actually smother it in foam, and that's how you suffocate it. So it's thinking oil rigs, that kind yeah. of fire. They had this piece of kit that would squirt this foam out, and they didn't quite know how the bubbles were made. They knew it worked but they didn't quite know how. So I ended up making a Perspex nozzle, uh, had a high-speed video camera, and this was in the days where we still had VHS uh, tape recorders. Right. Uh, now a high-speed video camera would fit on my lap. Yes, yeah, yeah. But this at 40,000 frames per second, just about fitted in the back of an estate car. What, 40, so this was, what, what year so, was that, sorry? Um, end of the 90s. Yeah, so 40,000 frames per second in the 90s. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's a, yeah, going to be a big kids. old camera. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have the slow mo guys back in those days. No, yes, because yeah. they use a Phantom now. Is it? Is that what they're called? I can't remember the name, but even those are still big, right? For what they oh, capture, yeah. but forty thousand frames a second. Wow. Yeah. So I've got a yeah. load of video. I've got no. I've got nine three-hour VHS tapes of video of bubbles being made. It looks like something out of Star Trek. Wow. Star Wars probably. Um, as as these bubbles, yeah, goo along and form. wow, that's incredible. Mm. But so yeah. There's probably so much more with the world of bubbles and things like that. So, <laughs> anyway, that, so I gave that up. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but you got a PhD. Well, PhD just... They gave me a PhD. Wow. Um, mainly for the, the videoing bit, because that was new to science. They hadn't, no one had ever done that before. Oh, fantastic. And that sort of PhD is generally, his, what, what have you added to the world's knowledge? Wow. That's incredible. So is this is that like a paper or something, publicised or something that you, um, I can... There's, there's a thesis. Really? Yeah. Wow. I want to learn about bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you an aero later. It'll be uh, right. Champagne is better. I keep thinking. Yes. Oh, yeah. But no, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yes. you said about Michael Jackson, I'm thinking of Bubbles the Monkey, who is actually still alive. I found out the other day. Completely cross changed there. I, I was genuinely really shocked by that. I looked at Lucy like, oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> Bubbles the monkey Bubbles. is still alive. <laughs> he's here today. Yeah, he's down in a zoo in Florida or something, like a monkey sanctuary. I found out the other day, random fact. I suppose they do live quite long, chimpanzees. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's older now. He's got a grey hair, and bowls, <laughs> but he's still alive. I thought he was passed away. But, yeah, wow. that does surprise me. Yeah. I heard that, uh, <laughs> this is the worst aside ever, <laughs> I heard that um, Bubbles the monkey was killed on the Neverland Ranch yes, there was... um, by uh, some sort of reverse reversing truck or something and he got a replacement bubbles yeah. a bubbles mark ii there was loads of like myths about him and stuff but yeah. i think he's having a, a chilled life now because he used to be yeah put out in paparazzi and you know he used to sit at the table and have dinner with him there's loads of it's a pretty interesting i read a lot about it i, I went <laughs> I, so I was reading about posh where burgers Barry's thesis is going i, yeah, I read the <laughs> sun every day <laughs> yeah. it's on the sun again though i read it every day so i think i went from posh burglars oh bubbles the monkey <laughs> you know so there we go <laughs> I can't, that's incredible, like a PhD in bubbles. So is that like a theory to bubbles? Could you summarise it for someone with my uh, brain cell? Uh, <laughs> like, brain cell. cell. <laughs> yeah. so, so, I, I was looking at how bubbles are made. Yes. And there are three different ways. Okay. The kids bubble little hoop in washing up liquid. That's on my level. Blowing. I know yeah. where you are with that. That's one way. <laughs> Has that got a name? Uh, kids hoop blowing okay. <laughs> method. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's the, um, like, whipping an egg. Yeah, oh, yes. uh, aeration sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 See? Good go. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cookery, yeah. yeah. And then the final one is um, air entrapment from, oh. like, imagine a bubble bath. So yeah. you've got the tap coming down, the water's pushing down into the, the water from the tap is coming down into the bath water and actually taking air in with it. And if there's enough surfactant soap in that 
bath water, yeah. it will the the air then gets trapped and form yeah forms and form, visual form bubbles. bubbles. Wow, that's incredible. How does it work in the fire extinguisher then? Is it the third one? Or? It's a mixture of all three actually. Oh really? Yeah. So wow. the there's air entrained right at the beginning, and in there's a, something called a, a branch pipe, which is a, a big tube, mm. and in that bit, so you squirt in your soapy mixture, it sucks in air. Uh, in, the, in the same way that if you're having a shower, and you know the shower curtain comes towards you yeah. when you're in the shower. And it sticks to you. Yeah, it sticks like, to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's because the, the shower pressure is coming down and it's actually taking the air down with it, causing a little bit of a vacuum that's pulling the uh, shower curtain towards you. So anyway, so that method is pulling the air in. Yeah. It then all gets mixed up in this branch pipe in this big tube. It then flies 100 metres or something. And as it's flying, it's doing the blowing hoop things because these fingers of gloopy solution are sort of going out and then going round the, uh, through the air. And so they're blowing oh. through these gloop, gloopy fingers of wow. soap solution. And then as it finally hits the, the ground, it's in training. It hits, hits the whatever we're hitting. Wow. So uh, did they task you to do that then? Did they say, oh, we want to find out why? Or was it something in, in you that, you know, again, you say yeah, that's No, that. it wasn't a burning desire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, there's, there's, I think they call it knowledge transfer partnership nowadays. Okay. So universities, um, government and small businesses get together, con uh, contact a small business and say, what research project would you really like to do but you can't afford to, you haven't got the time. Right. And so the university gets involved and the government pays some of your wage. So you, they get young graduates, put them into these small companies and say, right, this is this is a real life problem. Wow. Uh, do it for a couple of years, write it up. Um, if, it, if it's novel enough, write it up and you'll get a PhD. Wow. So I did. That's incredible. And then, so from there, you're like, I've got my PhD. Did you move on to... Then I moved on to, I ran a computer consultancy for a while, which was very lucrative and very boring. Right. So I gave that up and started going back to the making. Yeah, I was doing. Which you, you, yeah. passion, right? and I was yeah. also writing. Yeah. I was writing a, a lot of stuff for newspaper articles and okay. things, mainly translating science into plain English. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is good. So then I, I started uh, making more electronic-y things. So I went to university, I did mechanical engineering. Wow. I was meant to do mechatronics, which is mechanical and electronics computing. Mm -hmm. Hated the electronics and the computing. Uh, I wanted to do spitting spitting image puppets. That was oh, that was cool. where I was at eighteen. Yeah. Or the Great Egg Race. Oh uh, my so goodness! Was that eighties film? Eighties uh, TV program I'm with to think Heinz, of the Heinz Wolf. Wolf. I was thinking Will Ferrell, but he mad was the other hair, one. Yes. Bow tie, German accent, and they they task teams with here's an egg and a rubber band. Get it as far across. Get the egg as far across. Oh, I the, love that. The room as you can. It's kind of like Taskmaster, but was it more formal sort of thing in a way? So, it, it, yeah, it's far more sciencey. Yeah. Less so there was comedy, actually a it was method. Still sort of fun and yeah. 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 I only vaguely remember it, but yeah, yeah I don't think anyone snappy. could forget Heinz. Wolf, yes. <laughs> except when that's now when I thought he was Wolf Lund, but we'll really skip over that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, anyway, so I loved doing that, and I thought I want to do that for a living. Yeah, and, and then found out that probably that wasn't a job. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is what stops so yes. many of us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's taken me 20 years to invent that job again. Okay. Um, and I got into a Raspberry Pi, which is a credit card size computer. Okay, not it, a Pi. So not, not, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Um, sadly not. It's electronics. It's got about the same programming power as a computer of five years ago, but it's 35 quid. Wow. It was actually invented to get kids back into the hardcore computing, not using Microsoft Office or something, okay. but actually programming. In terms of the hardware then? Or so the, software, the hardware or? and the software, yeah. Yeah. The, right down to the basic level, programming right. in Python or something like that. And these Raspberry Pis have got... Uh, what are called GPIO pins, general purpose input output, uh, and they're pins you can attach to other things. So no longer are you now just connected to a screen, you can connect other things. So my first project was using this Raspberry Pi, connected some LEDs to it, got it scraping Twitter, which in those days um, there was a Twitter account that would tweet you when the International Space Station was going over your house. Oh, yes. oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Father Christmas, as I tell the kids. Yes, <laughs> yes. yeah. There he is on his sleigh. <laughs> Every 90 yeah. minutes. That's it. Yeah, he's back again. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was scraping this information from Twitter, making it light up a LED, which I then put in a lamp. And so I had this, oh, 
my SS is coming over, I can go outside and wave at the astronauts. Or if I'd go outside and wave at the astronauts because I'm like that. Oh, wow. So, so that was my first a... real, yeah. it's an internet of things right. device. Um, wrote it up because that's what I um, I enjoy doing yeah. that. And the way I wrote it up was a bit like a Haynes manual. Here's some pictures, here's some uh, words. This is how I did it. This is the bit of code that okay. I used. And you shared that, sorry? Or? So, I shared, so I put that yeah. on my own website. Yeah. And so eventually uh, other people started noticing that I was doing that kind of thing. Mm. And now I've written blogs for IBM. I've worked for Barclays Bank. Right. Um, I work for RS Components. Uh, so if I write these kind of, I've made a fun thing and this is how you too can make yeah. it. Yeah. Is that um, your favourite fun thing that you've made? Uh, or is there, is, there, I mean, is there lots of Oh, there's a lot, yeah. lot, lots and lots. I made a replica Banksy shredder frame. Recently. Oh wow! Yeah, I yes. think I saw that actually. I've, I've, I've seen a preview, preview of that, and yeah. uh, but that actually failed, didn't it? He he wanted it to shred the whole paper. He the... said he did. Right. But then he's showing a video of him holding the hot part of a soldering iron, uh, using a soldering iron like you'd use a pencil. Yes. Um, yeah, that big gets to 230 degrees C. So if ah, it had been plugged in... He's, he's holding like near the tip with yeah, his he's, hand. Yeah, he's, he's, he's holding his hand right at the nib, mm. uh, whereas you hold it at the other <clears> end. <throat> yeah, it's, uh, yes, it's, it's it will melt your fingers. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so that was wrong. He had a whole load of craft blades, and they were um, horizontal rather than vertical. And if you imagine trying to cut something, you're slicing uh, uh, an apple, for yes. example, yeah. you, you, you use the knife yeah, one to use it. Slapping it with a flat edge is no good. <laughs> okay. And he had all these craft knives, flat edge on, that were meant to be slicing nicely a piece of paper that was coming down vertically. Right. And so that just wouldn't... I, mean, I even tried it. I got some craft knives and I put it in and it makes little Vs. It, ah. it doesn't make nice slices. So a couple of the things that he put on a video that said, this is how I made it. Yes. And I think, mm, no. Do you think that's an intentional prank sort of thing from him? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 It's, okay. it's more get people talking. Yes. Because the more we talk about it, yeah, the more his absolutely. name gets out there. Yeah. I went to Disneyland actually. His bank oh, really? did. Uh, yeah, well, in, he did yeah, that in Western, Western in my yeah. hometown. And it was just boomed. And Jack Black was there actually. The day I went there because it brought in so much t publicity. But it was it really was miserable. <laughs> 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 like they, I don't know if you ever got the chance to go there. It was only there. Yeah, for, I, I saw your. Um, oh, I did a video vlog. Yeah, I did a video yeah, just walking around it. Um, it's like an ice rink at the moment actually. Bizarrely, that place. But oh. yeah, they told the staff to literally be really depressed. And I managed to get one of them to crack when I was paying the ticket. I was like, come on. Give me a smile, and she literally gave just a little smirk. But it was brilliant; like it was really good for the publicity there. But oh yeah, I wasn't. I loved that whole shredder thing, but I, I wasn't sure if it was supposed to go all the way through or not. But you replicated that. Well, uh, I replicated that sort of I, how I think he actually did it, or how I would have made it if I'd needed it. Something to work at Sotheby's is actually uh, there's a magic money trick where you can feed a piece of paper into in between two barrels, and it looks like you're just feeding it straight through the two barrels. But mm. actually, between the barrels, there's a, a figure of eight of oh, paper. Like, oh, like a so real, actually, yeah. yeah. So as you're feeding it in one side, it goes up and round one barrel. Like a real and, sort of thing. And so something <laughs> that you've already put on the second barrel feeds ah. out. And that would have been a much easier way yes. of of doing that kind of trick. It would also mean whoever bought it does actually have the picture as yeah. well, so they're less likely to complain yeah. or want money back. Or... But now it's mm. in a German museum. That's right, yeah. And they've taken it apart and made sure it no one else can go and trigger it. So I think it was ah. triggered with a car remote control fob. That kind of thing. Ah, they needed and to so, be in. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Mark them at the White House. <laughs> yeah. Thank God they didn't do it there. <laughs> yes. Bloody hell. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if it's worth more now, actually, that picture, as a result of that. Yeah, well, yeah all the publicity. Yeah, because the... there was one in Newport recently where he sprayed it, but um, they, he's actually, it brought so much publicity, it was on his shed or garage or something like that, and he had to put a perspex screen up to stop vandalism and people wanted, but I think that he's kept it in Port Talbot now, that's where it is in Wales, and but he kept it in the area, but it just draws so much publicity. Mm. Um, in fact, the actual windmill that Banksy left in Dismaland, they're bringing that into, he, that's the one thing he left there. It's a huge, you know, I don't know, 50 meter high sort of big seaside style wing mill and they're just going to put it in the center of the town because they just know it will just flood people in but yeah it was yeah nothing like uh, the shredder thing i think that was that yeah. was a really unique thing yeah it was good, um, it was good he does, does quite a lot of stunts like that doesn't he? he did one where he had a stall i think in new york where um i think he it was on him running the stall but he had people saying it's like banksy knockoffs but they're actually legitimate ones that are worth tens of thousands and i don't know if you ever heard of that one yeah he's selling them for 40 dollars. yeah that's it yeah. people were buying these Banksy's like fake, you know, ones that look still good. You can get them online and all that for forty dollars or whatever. And it was actually a legitimate Banksy worth thousands. These people were Goodness. selling them on eBay. Who is Banksy? Will we ever know? 
Well, his real name is Gareth Hoxton. It, it's, it, obviously, in Bristol, there's loads of banks he's scattered around there. They, they claim... <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. the greatest trick the devil ever pulled. <laughs> <laughs> they claim that Banksy's from Bristol. Uh, they, yeah. there's, there's loads scattered around. And I've got a few people that think they've met him, but there's other people that believe that there's many people that pretend to be him. So that's... I oh, don't know. It's like a group, the Banksy yeah. Collective. Yes, yeah. I don't know. But uh, what are these things we've got in front of us then? Is that a Raspberry Pi? So we've got I think a, I heard you we have got a Raspberry Pi uh, plugged in there. Okay. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's credit card size. Uh, it looks like a, a green PCB. Uh, it's got some sockets where you can plug a monitor in, uh, you can plug USB in, you can plug an Ethernet cable in, and then it's got these GPIO pins, which uh, look a bit like hedgehog pins, just sticking up. There's 40 pins there. Uh, Lucy sussed me out already, saying things like hedgehog, and I like that. <laughs> That's where I get this. And uh, you can tell Lucy does a podcast because that's a very good description for people that can't see what we're doing right now. So that is... Absolutely, yeah. So plugged into that, I've got a... Maplin's RIP. Uh, <laughs> mm. No longer exist. It's gone, is it? Uh, yeah, it has oh. gone. Now, now if oh. I need a small component, I basically have to travel to the bloody Katmandu because there's just nowhere retail anymore. Yeah. yeah. Or order online from RS Components. Other places are available. I don't even know if they are these days. <laughs> but they are very nice because they help Lucy in her podcast. Oh, yes, that's true. We like RS Components. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've got this um, Maplin plastic dinosaur. It's, it's probably five inches across. It's a kit that's designed for children. It's see-through orange with a motor connected to it. And it's... The idea is children assemble this thing and um, turn it on, turn it off, and the dinosaur nods. So I've actually got it connected to the Raspberry Pi, and it's looking for tweets. So if someone tweeted, hashtag wake dino, it would start nodding. Really? Oh, <laughs> wake dino. This is so good that the Wi-Fi in the Google building is generally okay. Yeah, you'd think. It would be yeah. better in a so Google So this is just building. a standard toy that you get in any shop and it's been adapted? Or? Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, the, the, there's a little bit of electronics that I've had to add, um, yeah. which has got a, a transistor in. So you can't connect a motor straight to the pins okay. of the GPIO uh, because the, the, it would just melt it. The currents, yeah. it takes too much current. Wow. So I've had to put in a little bit of electronics that basically acts as a switch. So, oh my gosh. There it goes. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> there we are. It has gone. <clears throat> and it stops again. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ryan looked so pleased. So this is powered to like just mains power through the, so, the little... Yeah, the, uh, there's a, the mains power to the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And the dinosaur has actually got a AA battery. And so the, the Raspberry Pi sends a message to a switch that opens the battery to the dinosaur wow that's awesome do you have uh, 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 any other versions like this did you have a larger one I've, or... I've got larger ones so this was yeah. this this came about because i've been working at a theme park called black gang chine yes i've heard of this on where... the isle of Wight. yes and where they've got full-size t-rex full-size dinosaurs wow and their their electronics Died. I think Ryan's in heaven here because he's a massive <laughs> uh, Jurassic Park fan. We tried to replicate Jurassic Park, so you might have done that then by saying that. Well, we played. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the electronics went, and I, I got a team together, and we pulled out a load of the the electronics. And it was they'd come over from China, and they said, "Oh yeah, we can send you some new electronics, but it takes six weeks on the boat." And it's like we haven't got six weeks. It's now the busy summer six. We've got to get these dinosaurs working, and we put Raspberry Pis in, and there's a lovely piece of uh, software. Uh, programming language called Node Red. And it's a visual flow programming. So you just drag and drop, like like Lego really. Oh, cool. You drag and drop programming. So we I taught the staff how to program their dinosaur, managed to control it with these <laughs> Raspberry Pis. And so now in on the Isle of Wight, these huge T Rex is controlled by a Raspberry Pi. Um, wow. And the sort of in a strange way, the theory of that is Almost this, but scaled up, yeah. but with is it certain points of arms and legs? Well, it's, it's still, they're all on cams. So okay. basically they just turn this motor on, turn the tail motor on, yep. turn the head motor on, turn the jaw motor on. Wow. Um, to send the, the, the WAV file to raw. Oh, cool. Because uh, <laughs> at one stage, the, the lip sync and the raw were completely out. <laughs> so <laughs> like the, a Chinese the, uh, film or something. Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, they would go raw and then five seconds later, the mouth would open. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't so good, so they can reprogram those. Oh, brilliant. 
Okay. So what, did you, I mean, obviously you say you're an inventor for fun. This was just a personal fun project to do something like this? Well, I, was, I, I got called by uh, the theme park yeah. and said, our dinosaurs are broken. Can you help? Oh, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> One of our dinosaurs is missing. Yes. No, sorry, broken. Yeah. <laughs> broken. Yes. And this is like... In, Please so, come and hack our dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Oh, someone's treated it. Oh, hey. wonderful. That is awesome. So it's nodding up and down for those who can't see. Um, so this is just like your own sort of homage to that that you can have at home. And this helps now with presentations oh, of course. that I'm giving. Yeah, so yeah. I'll maybe talk about. I can't. Um, unfortunately, I can't bring the full size dinosaurs yeah, uh, right. to, a, to oh. a talk. But that's what we put. Uh, <laughs> but you, you're wrong. Here we go. <laughs> Here she just, is. Just, <laughs> it's like say, surprise, surprise. Yeah. We still have black. Yeah, imagine that. Well, that so, that's so incredible. I've got, I've got this one, which is which I say about five inches. I've got uh, a bit uh, much bigger one about two foot across oh wow that's made by the same company in china i went out to china mm. and can you make me a small one please and so that's got the same cam mechanism in as the big ones at the theme park so wow. that also comes out on various tours with me and we've also got is that a white rabbit on the table yeah we've got a white rabbit uh inside of that is another raspberry pi but this one's a much smaller it's a raspberry pi zero and it's about the same size as my thumb Okay, yeah. And uh, so the rabbit on the table... I don't know why I just looked at your thumb. I, mean, yeah. I know it's what a thumb, thumb is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a huge... I was, I was joking. It's like Uma Thurman in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even cowgirls get the blues. Yeah, it's Mary like Paul. the size of a Dell multiplex or something. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, this rabbit that, that's on the table there, for those who aren't watching on the on the YouTubes, uh, is, is six inches, seven inches mm. tall. Wow. It's 3D printed. It's got a, it's a white plastic. I was going to say that sort of... That's it. Yeah, it looks like I've never seen anything 3D printed in my life. This is a new thing for me. I, I just... I, I'm so jealous because as, as we have discussed before, my yeah. 3D printer broke. Really? Uh... It's it not moving on the x-axis anymore. I've got to try and fix it on the ground. It's printed almost nothing. I got the test prints going that it broke. <sighs> yeah, they do that mm. a lot. I'm really basic with 3D printer. I thought it was all paper, but I love it. Because it's not. <laughs> I thought it was. I mean, this is clearly not paper, right? This is. Oh, I see. You thought it built something I, yeah, up. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Ah. I had a guy that tweeted me that I do a lot of kitchen gadget reviews, and there's a guy yeah. who said he's you can go online and get loads of templates for 3D printing gadgets. And I'm like, he said, oh, yeah, I've got this really good one that you know zests a lemon, uh, or so you get the yeah. juice out. And I was like, well, it's paper. <laughs> like, it's not going to work, right? Uh, it's like, oh, you can. Should I explain the 3D printer? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Please, okay. Lucy. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. This will save okay. me a task later. <laughs> Imagine piped icing. So you've got an icing yes, bag. Yes, you're talking my world, Lucy. I like uh, this. You've got an icing bag. Uh, yeah. and, and as you squeeze it, you could actually make, uh, you, if you've got your cake, you could make a nest in yep. your cake. So you do one layer around and another layer yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. So instead of icing, we're actually using what looks like strimmer wire. It's a plastic, thin plastic um, uh, ribbon of... Yeah. Of, pl of plastic, PLA, ABS, different types. And you have to buy the colour or you can... You have to buy the yeah, colour. Yeah, OK. And you feed that through a nozzle that's at about 220 degrees. So, guess uh, Like six. Um, Banksy's biro. Yeah. The heat, yeah, I was thinking yeah. the angle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> Guess what? It's, it's, yep. a, it's a hot oven. Yeah, okay. So, okay hot Brilliant. Oven, like a melted glue gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you basically so you're melting in. this stuff and then um, there's X, Y, Z axes. Yeah, yeah. As, as it's, it's going around, you do one layer, then the Z axis moves down a bit and you do wow. another la layer. Does it, it cool down, down quite quickly then to, to, uh, for the, it to hold its shape? Or does it sit yeah, in a mould yeah, or something? But yeah, but it still took about six hours to print. Wow. That oh, it doesn't say how long does it yeah, take. Yeah, no, it's, wow. it's a long time. That's Which incredible. is why it's really frustrating when it gets halfway through and then dies. <sighs> Oh, yeah. So it's like having a printer yeah. jam with paper, but with something a lot more. Yes. Yeah. I, I woke up in the morning to think I would have the third part of my iris box made. Instead, I had a very small bit of iris box. And you just, printed an eyeball? Uh, iris box. Not an actual eyeball. <laughs> an iris? Um, like oh. it's, a, it's a sort of box and you twist the top of it and it sort of opens Stargate, out. but that means nothing to you. Uh, no, yeah, no. Stargate, no. Yeah. But, yeah. You had me at um, icing, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, right. Wow. So yeah. what do you think the future of 3D printing is while we're on this? Is there like anything that could not be achieved? I mean, could you 3D print a house one day? Yeah. It's been done, I believe, it's been done. isn't it? Yeah. It's wow. been done. Mm. I went to Autodesk recent, recently and they are 3D printing ship's propellers out of brass so basically they're using brass. a welder um to deposit the, yeah. the stuff and then they're using um machines to cut it to smooth it and polish it so yeah a ship's propeller which is well it was nearly as tall as me wow so there are things they're doing rocket engines they're, they're doing yeah. a lot of things but just not on the household scale yet 
really. Yeah, I wonder, if, that, I think I wonder patience, if that's coming where eventually where I'm going back to kitchen gadgets because that's my world, but yeah, this this guy with the lemon zester, and obviously now it's in this material. I, I have to apologise to him if he's listening. <laughs> uh, sent him a very firm text. <laughs> but I just wonder whether it's like soon you wouldn't go on Amazon to buy something. You'd be like, I've got my printer, but I'm downloading my template, and I'm going to do it the colour I want, and it's it's there. And obviously six hours, and maybe in ten years, the technology does it in half an hour, and it's like okay, I've made it myself. I I'm wonder. Happy. Yeah, I'm happy. like the replicators in Star Trek and other. Yeah. Oh, really? really bad reference from that. <laughs> 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 I get, I get, I get. So this rabbit, what does it do, sorry? Okay, so it's, it's inside there's a SIM chip, so like a mobile phone chip, yeah. uh, connected to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, you can text the bunny rabbit. So this started with um, my brother's got kids, uh, so my mum has grandchildren. She wanted to send a message to the grandchildren when they were too small to have a mobile phone. And she asked me to make something that wasn't connected to the house Wi-Fi. Because oh. actually programming things onto someone else's Wi-Fi, it gets a bit complex. And so there's a SIM card in here. So my mum can send a text message to the bunny rabbit and the heart lights up blue. Wow. And then the kids can press the bunny rabbit's tail. There's a little button on the tail. And it then oh, yes. sends a message back to my mum's phone that says, we love you, nanny. If I press that tail now, will that do that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Nadi. Can I? Yeah, go on. Go on. Oh. Although we need now, we need my mum's phone okay. to find If that. you get a text from her or yeah. something. Like that. <laughs> You're doing it again. <laughs> and then the heart will light up if I text a certain so number? If, so if I... Okay. Uh, this is crazy. It's yeah, connected. So if I text Bunny... I can see is the your heart. house like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone? Do you have loads of these... No, contraptments I've, around. <laughs> I've got nothing plugged in. Okay, right. Yeah, as I say, that's the thing. You unplug it, it's, it's fine, yeah. you're safe. Yeah. But, like, you could have, wow. Like, even security and things like that, you could have. I like, you know, the world is your imagination, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what the phone signal's like here, so that might oh, not work. Oh, it's pretty, it's, yeah. Well, something's... Yeah. It's the heart will go the blue, heart, the, no, there's, there's red flashing inside, ah, and I think it's, it's going a bit too fast. I haven't actually moved my head to that angle yeah. before, yep. Um, so so that, that may or may not go blue at some stage. Okay. Uh, but I've done the same, but with a wine bottle. Oh, wow. An empty wine bottle with light, okay. lights inside it. And so my friends can text me uh, when they're having a drink so I can have a drink and I'm not alone having a oh, drink. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's cool. Could you even patent something like that and try and market it as a thing? Yeah, I, could, uh, I get bored after one. It's just more for fun, right? I get bored after one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll write up how to do it. It's that sort of thing again, done that and yeah. move on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, I'll keep an eye for the blue heart and the rabbit. But I think I did see a preview of it before we, we started a little yeah. bit. Another thing on the table here is a... a that's that 3D Eight printed? Inch, nine inch, uh, 3D printed uh, female torso. It's a mannequin. So if you go into a dress shop or you go go into a fashion shop, you'll see the mannequins with mm. the clothes on. A, I was talking to a dressmaker who makes bespoke dresses and she wanted to put electronics in dresses. So I took some of my stuff down and she actually saw the bunny and said, what material is this? What I really need is she makes tiny little dresses. Uh, so I've, I've Like got, for Barbie dolls or something? Uh, <laughs> Almost. This is so. This is seven inches tall. Um, a little dress that you can give as a gift. So if you're buying your wife a bespoke dress for Christmas, obviously they've got to get married. They've got to get measured. Not married. They've got to get measured, and so you can't do that as a surprise. But you can give oh. a tiny little dress. Oh, that's clever. To say I'm giving you a dress, but you've got to go and get it. Choose the colour. Choose the. I really want to order one right now. And I don't even want to wear a dress. <laughs> so, <laughs> Maggie, yeah, Maggie yeah. Simple .com, uh, is, ah. is the company. Anyway, so she makes these little dresses, but she really wanted mannequins to put them on. Uh, and then when she goes out to shows, yeah. she can show the, all the different styles of dresses that she's made. That's genius. All bespoke. So I 3D printed this dress for her. But now, I would never have thought of just going and thinking, I know, I'll just 3D print a lady's shape. Um, yeah, yeah. And Googling th ladies' torso 3D print is not the best idea. Clear that history, Stuart. Yeah, <laughs> there's gaming software where you're writing games and oh. you can actually choose your own um, character. It's yes. Ah. And there's, there's, there's ones with sliders and you can say, okay, make, make her more feminine, make her more masculine, make right. her taller, uh, give pinch her waist in, make her bum mm -hmm. bigger. And so I took this to Maggie and said, okay, what do we want our, our person to look like? Wow. Because all the others were like, like Cindy. They weren't human-shaped. Yeah. And so we actually made a human-shaped model. That's... And, and now she's got them and 
So she Blazing. gets very minimal, uh, sorry, minimal versions of the dresses scaled right down to size and takes them in, in a bit yeah. of a car, like a hundred dresses in, in yeah. a bag for what would take you know, hands full. Like Which carrying... is yeah, better when you're, you're going abroad. Yeah, That's and saves right. the production costs of making one. And uh... well, Yes, but they still hand make these yeah. little ones, which are so tiny. It's yeah. gorgeous. Wow. That's incredible. So to use a reference Barry will get, it's like in 1977 when they were releasing the first Star Wars figures and they couldn't get them out to the market in time. So Kids for Christmas got a cardboard package that said, you will be getting these figures soon. Oh, and what they a came in the mail like three months later. Really? And it's I think it like sold really well, which still amazes me because kids generally don't want to have to well, wait that three was, months. Yes, but that was the first ever models from TV, wasn't it? It was the, it was the, it's close. There was some Planet of the Apes stuff beforehand. Was there was Battlestar Bubbles Galactica. Was yeah, Bubbles, Bubbles, <laughs> Bubbles, <laughs> Bubbles the Monkey in Space. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, 70s classic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that is a, that's such a good idea. That I mean, is I'm that intrigued is by the Zeppelin. I've seen the Zeppelin before. Oh, the I didn't see that. But I don't know its purpose. Is that a blimp? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is an airship. Again, it's 3D printed. And this one my brother requested. Uh, he wanted uh, something, and I've, I've just uh, turned it on now, and it's changing colour, my, my 3D printed yeah. uh, airship. He wanted it connected to the internet. And so when somebody... And it's connected to Google Analytics. So when somebody Googles Stairway to Heaven, <laughs> it lights up because it's my, it's got LEDs in. It's my LED Zeppelin. Oh. Hey. Very, I'm very clever. I'm the appreciation waves from Alec there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the PhD clash there. Like, <laughs> the, the world's collided. Yeah. Oh, let's leave that one there. But this is Glowing. fun as well. This is like I say, I've, got, I've got one more. Oh, oh, wow. I've got one more. I've got oh, it's a, a golden shoe. Gold I've shoe. got a golden boot that's got LEDs all around the sole. And you buy them from online shops uh, like this. And you press a button and they change colour. So you press a button in inside and they change colour. So I actually took the electronics out that it came with, put my own electronics in... And now you can tweet this to change colour. So I, <laughs> you can you can tweet, and it's it's all um, you know. I, I could put the soul back in and actually walk around in these. So if you tweet at cheerlights and uh, oh, I think Ryan's on the case. Uh, yeah. A colour, um, a colour of the rainbow. Orange and yellow doesn't work too well. I'll just say. Uh, so a colour of the cheerlights and a colour of the rainbow that's not. Pink. Yeah, it's all blue and yeah. green. Green. Cheer, cheer lights. C H E E R L I G H T S. Cheer lights. Got it. I just tweet the colour. Yep. Okay, Other people are tweeting. So around the world, there are thousands of things connected to, or looking for that at cheer lights. Uh, so oh, it's right. not just it's not just my boot. Okay. Uh, I tweeted. What colour did you go? Red. Okay, well, it takes a while for it to poll, and now it's gone out completely, so you've broken it. <laughs> Cheer lights break. <laughs> lights up, yeah. is that what you do? <laughs> Activate <laughs> self-destruct sequence. Wow. So That's people in... all around the world, it, it's usually done around Christmas, where you put your Christmas tree lights up, and other people can control everyone's Christmas oh. tree lights. Wow. Yeah. So this is uh, the shoe is part of a much larger network of lights. Yes, of yeah. cheer lights oh. around the world, yeah. Wow. So I've, I've just turned it off and turned it on again and uh, we'll see. NASA that, style, that is. Yeah. That, that, that's incredible. That's and this is and that, really... one, that one was completely for fun. No, that wasn't. I bought the lot, I bought the boots and then people said, have you hacked them yet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I had to. So it, it says you get asked that a lot then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Raspberry Pi Zero in that one, I'm assuming same in the... Yeah. The Zeppelin, what about the shoe? Is that ESP8266. Same? Oh, I don't know that one. There we uh, go. Um... Is that an, an upgraded Raspberry Pi? Or? It's a different thing. Okay. It's, it's a. It's a. Again, it's a computer board. Mm. Uh, it's a micro microprocessor. I probably get my terminology incorrect there. That's okay. Uh, someone yeah. will complain. No, <laughs> blame it on me. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> it's uh, you program it. So there's Raspberry Pi and there's Arduino, the main different types. Raspberry Pi is a computer and it's got an operating system and you can program it just like. Any other computer, mm. the Arduino you have to go into programming a programming language like Python, like C. Uh, so th this is programmed in, uh, I think C plus plus actually this one, um, and the ESP eight two six six has got a chip that will talk to Wi Fi. 
Right. So I've got it talking to my phone Wi-Fi, although my batteries seem to have died. <laughs> so it's been sitting no. on the floor quite happily all this time, <laughs> yeah. and, now, and now it's died. No, we believe you. Based on these ones as well, it's, it's incredible. And this is really just done for, for fun, really, like you say. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. that whole thing of, you know, setting and then, the challenge. And people and, pay yeah. me to write them up. Ah, uh, okay. So that's right. that's how I... So you'll publish this on your website? Uh, yeah, or, yeah, or someone else's website. And then okay, and then they'll take the... Yeah. Wow. Have you got a favourite thing that you've ever done in that in this, in this the fun world, or is there, is there more sort of... Uh... It's usually the one that I'm currently doing. Okay. So I'm at the moment just finished making a... My friend's into steampunk. She wants to be a dragon tra- tamer. So she can make the dragon, and she's made this wonderful um, latex dragon head Wow. on okay. this dragon. She wanted it to breathe smoke. So I have hacked an e-cigarette <laughs> oh. using uh, vegetable glycerin so it doesn't smell, uh, using a car uh, garage remote control fob. Ooh. So her Not husband <laughs> can actually t- send the message to it. It breathes smoke. So its li- eyes light up, its nostrils light up. Wow. And the smoke comes out of, of its nose. Um Whenever she wants. That's incredible. Or whenever, yeah. And that's your favourite thing because that's what you're doing right now. Yeah. And you kind of tick that box and you're like, right, this is my new... Yeah, bored now. Yeah. Shiny. Ooh, shiny. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I like that's shiny. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that so much. Is it a Makers Guild that you've created? Is that... I don't know if you get that yeah, right. A Guild of Makers. Guild of Makers, there we guild go. Guild of Makers, yes. Uh, I, I've been doing things like this and thinking well yeah I'm, I'm finally making a living out of it and making the fun things mm. that like the great egg race in the 70s 80s it's like yeah how do i make a living out of that yeah, yeah. Um, and i i do it by turning it into plain english and explaining to other people sure. how to do it but some people will make a thousand of them and sell them and we set up i set up the guild of makers because there wasn't somewhere where a lot of people who make things can get together so we help each other hmm. uh, it's a it's a membership membership society um mainly based on encouraging support and helping yeah. other people so you might actually get the dressmaker uh so she she makes something but she, again she wanted the, the mannequin made so and she I comes on with the, a, a problem she'll, she'll and you come in a, with a problem yeah. and we'll say right anyone in the guild can can you do this oh ah, cool um or, or i might make something and say oh actually i want i want to have this electronic thing mm. in a pair of shoes in an item of clothing who are the makers who make those so we've got all the all the crafts the the, yeah. the dressmaking the knitting the, the sewing uh wood turning all the electronics, right. people who, t- who make metal. So it's not just make a, electronics then? It's not just electronics. I'm to talk to you about kitchen gadgets. <laughs> 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 yeah. Crowdfunding is cancelled. <laughs> wow, so that's we've incredible. Got, we've got one guy who makes these most beautiful steampunk clocks with Nixie tubes. Uh, right. the Nixie tubes are... Before we had LEDs in petrol pumps in the 50s and 60s, they're glowing, they look neon, glowing lights that showed how, how much um, petrol you'd used. Um, and as soon as LEDs came in, they all went out. So they look like they're valves, the old style glass valve. They've got numbers on. And he takes these and he puts them in a piece of old equipment such as... Do you, do you remember the voltmeters you might have had at school that were you know, A4 size? Yes, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in beautiful wooden boxes. Wow. And most, most of this kit in those days was, was beautiful wooden boxes. So he takes the old kit, puts these Nixie tubes in and makes clocks. And stunning, beautiful things. He, and he makes a living out of doing this. He's, he sells these clocks. But someone approached him and said, uh, can we have a nuclear bunker, nuclear waste area with this with a clock? Wow. And uh, he makes clocks. He hasn't done model making. But we've got another uh, member, Dave Kirby, who does Warhammer type size ah, yes, um, yeah. models. So uh, the things, the, the goblins, the dragons that you can... Paint. Yeah, the really, yeah, really intricate stuff. Really, really intricate yeah. stuff. So they've worked together on this. And uh, Paul has made the clock. Uh, Paul Parry, Bad Dog Designs, is his mm. company. Uh, Dave Kirby has made... He even made barbed wire. Tiny, tiny barbed wire with you know, just little strands of strands like wow. hair. Strands of hair. And tied the barbed on. Wow. Uh, made barrels and there's green LEDs on it. And it's just this most wonderful mm. collaboration right. between I, two different makers. Yeah, and I guess as you... Uh, as, as part of that, that makes you quite proud to see that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is there an event coming up on with regards to that? Yeah, we've got an uh, annual conference. So yeah. mainly we're virtual. Yeah. Uh, which, which is great because we've got 150 members, but they're in four different continents. Wow. 
and with so someone could be easily making something in Australia and saying, how do I how do I stick this to that? <laughs> and someone somewhere in our community has probably done that already. Um, so, but once a year, uh, once a year, this is our, our second conference. We get speakers in, and we have some workshops. And so we're um, one of the workshops is paper automata, uh, so like clockwork mechanisms, but made out of origami. Made, these wow. ones are made out of paper. Mm. Um, like yours, is it lemon zester. Yeah, 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 yeah. lemon, lemon yeah. zester. Yeah. Um, they made wow. pipe organ. Really, uh, out, of last, out of paper card, but oh yes, goodness. last year. Yeah, sort of like a strong paper. Like yeah. It, yeah. Wow. Um, we've got a locksmith coming in to give us a, a yeah. show of how he, how you pick locks, and then we've got a load of, of speakers. So this is a, like a, a paid for event. Sort it's of a paid yeah. for event. Yeah. 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 Uh, in uh, London or? It's in Birmingham. Birmingham. Okay. Yeah, it's in Birmingham on Friday the twenty second of March. Okay. Um, anyone can come along. You you don't have to be a member to to yeah. buy a ticket. Um, and yeah, come quite and fancy going there. See all the different yeah. makers and what what we've made. I mean, based on things like this today, it really does get your mind going. I can see where the fun is. I just wouldn't know how to do this. I just like, oh, shiny! Like, is it? Like, I'd be the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> be like, oh yes, we've got it. It works. But I mean, the whole to even come up with the complex in how this works is it's very exciting. And when I went yeah. to university in the nineties, yeah. as I said, the electronics and computing was I hated it. Right. But now there's so much online. There's so much help out there. Yeah. You There's so much design, yeah. that, and and the software is so much easier. Mm. Yeah, and the power of these things being so small. When you say about the Raspberry mm. Pi Zero, it's like literally just like that big, isn't it? Yeah, so that 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 worked well on the podcast. Yes, that was really good. That was good. We're not explaining that. That was to the size anybody. of Lucy's thumb. Yeah. That was yeah. about, about the size of my thumb. <laughs> yes. Um, Okay, and you also have a podcast as well, right? We talked about it sponsored by, was it RS? Yeah, RS Components yeah. uh, sponsored a comedy podcast. Yeah. So teamed up with Beck Hill, comedian. Yep. Who was on, uh, well, you probably hear this one before Beck Hill. Beck, <laughs> Beck, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, Beck's coming up. Um, and Harriet Brain, okay. uh, another comedian, and with a team of script writers. The first series we did was called History Makers, mm. and we went back in history and spoke to um, people who invented things that we're now using in everyday life and talked about the, the technology. So we spoke to Hedy Lamarr, um, oh, who invented okay. Wi-Fi. Mm. And, wow. and, and so you know, imagine what would we, the conversation be now and yeah. how does Wi-Fi actually work? So there was some actual facts in there, which was my role. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> and yeah. then Beck and Harriet's take yeah, uh, and songs as well. And so the next series that's coming up, and we're doing the recordings uh, in March, 19th, 20th and 23rd in London, and there's tickets available. Oh, uh, so between on, your, your yeah, conference, I think. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, lucyrogers.com, my okay. website. So the conference is available. Uh, the the conference is on that site as well. Okay. As this, these you can get tickets for this podcast, and we're doing things like what's the future of transport. This this time we're looking at the past, present, and future. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and so it's going to be it's going to be fun. So what we were talking about just then about three D printing, like, that's yeah, yeah. what it is now, what it will be. That's yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. Space, and where did yeah. it come from? Yeah. What was the first thing? But pottery was probably yeah, the first three D printing. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's incredible. There's a lot of uh, upcoming medical uses as well on there for sort of uh, replacement limbs and uh, things like that. And it, are they th looking at 3D printing sort of internal organs and bone and all yeah. sorts wow, of things? Wow, like hip yeah. replacements and yeah. stuff. That could yeah, be yeah, absolutely yeah. very. <laughs> We've got um, three questions that we'd like to ask everyone. Oh, yeah. uh, These sort of quick fire ones. Um, what's the most embarrassing moment you've ever been in <laughs> or situation? <laughs> Last year. Yep. I went to Sweden, uh, went to a friend's wedding, and I was there for a few days, and there was this beautiful lake, and it was in, in the hot summer. Yeah. So I went for a swim in the lake, and I thought, I'm in Sweden. Yeah. There's nobody around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going skinny dipping, first time ever. So, you know, very, very British, and yeah. side of the, yeah, get a towel down to the water, getting the water up to my neck, and I'm swimming along. I think, no, okay, this is, this is interesting, this is good. Um, and then I see a snorkel. Oh, coming towards me, <laughs> which would and mean there's probably someone with uh, goggles underneath. And yeah. I look around <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking, well, I can't see anyone. Okay, so they must be Swedish, so they'll be used to this sort of thing. So that's fine. So I'm still swimming around, but now, now swimming with my arms crossed, my legs <laughs> crossed, yeah. um, tr trying to swim. Uh, eventually, I get out, get get my towel, get dressed, put my glasses back on, look at, give this snorkeler a paralysing look. <laughs> It was a Canada goose. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, that's great. 
I think that's one of our best here, that. <laughs> that's great. Um, <laughs> that was the only way to go for all. <laughs> well, Quickly, what are the other questions? Uh, have, yeah. have you ever been mentioned in a local newspaper? Numerous times. Mm, I did suspect. <laughs> <laughs> First time I was about 12, I had... I, I was the... Uh, the captain of the HMS Pinafore in the Girl Guide play. And nice. I, we were about to put on a show and I got tonsillitis. Oh. oh. And I still did it. Oh, I yeah, still yeah, yeah. went on, on and sang, I am yeah. the captain of the Pinafore. <laughs> um, and that was my last acting role. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, fantastic. And who's the most famous person you've ever met? Obviously, you, you Robot Wars as well. We haven't even touched on that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Sir Killalot, that... probably. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I know who that is. Right. Um, he yeah. took a job from me once. Really? Come on, Steve. Well, don't tease me like that. It actually did happen. Um, so the BBC, remember they launched the micro bits, like their own little yeah. sort of almost Raspberry Pi, but not quite Arduino thing. Um yeah, and they wanted uh, like a sort of people to come in and play supply teachers. Okay. So I was going to be one of the supply teachers as a sort of vaguely recognisable YouTube man for a small percentage of the audience. But at the last minute, they went, oh, no, actually, we just got a load of robots in. And we oh. used that instead. So instead of supply teachers, they had like Sir Killalot and some Cybermen okay. and a Dalek. Ah, uh, and that's yeah. why I couldn't pay my rent. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They weren't actually offering any money, so. It didn't make <laughs> so, 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 kill a lot. Be like a, the, the main draw of Robot Wars. Would you say was that the? Is that the? I mean, I, I, I've never I've seen a whole well, episode. The main draw is Thermidor Two because my cousin Ian made it. Oh but, really? Um, so I don't think he was in the last series, so <laughs> maybe not so much. That's a lobster thermidor. That's a nice yes, yes, yeah, it is the house robots, robots that are always strong mm. and can always do nasty things yeah. to the other robots are always mm. a good draw. Do you ever get a chance to sort of make your own robots? Do you, have you ever sort of gone home from a shoot and been like, oh, I'm going to make my own? Would... Oh, no, I see the talent that's gone in and the hours and yeah, hours the and the hours that's gone in. I, think, I haven't got that attention span. Right. <laughs> it must be heartbreaking for them to spend weeks and weeks and weeks making this robot and then Chaos 2 or something comes in and rips it to pieces. You know, but... Oh. It, I mean, it looks it, and then you see in the pits, everybody is helping. Uh, I said, oh, I ripped you apart. Here, have a new motor. Have oh, a really? New... Yeah. It is, but everyone wants to have a good fight in the arena, yeah. but they want to have a good fight against a good robot. And so they're helping each other in the pits get their robots up to fighting standard. Is, uh, I suppose so, it's no fun if you go yeah. in with your amazing war robot, the other one just falls apart before it's reached you, then... Yeah. Yeah, yeah that wasn't How big are the robots? They're not your thumb for scale, but just in general. Are they like, um, <laughs> Hang on, I'll demonstrate. Yeah, I mean, are they a couple of feet high or wide or something? I'm yeah, trying. the um, so, so killer lot is is huge. So the house robots are much bigger than yeah. the actual yeah, yeah. The, the robots that are allowed, um, and they're. That I think they have to be less than a meter diameter. Wow! But they some of them are. Yeah. yeah. Um, the three judges once went in the pit. Um, and yeah, the pit is big enough to swallow the three, oh, really? three whole judges. Wow, that's incredible! I didn't yeah, it, that, it, it, it looks a lot smaller on TV. Yeah, yeah. crikey! Wow. Well, I think uh, this has been a really interesting podcast, and I'm going to definitely try and make it to Birmingham and have a. Uh, I'd love to try and attend that because I've just been absolutely <laughs> blown away by all of this. I feel like I, I shouldn't have gone to school actually, and Lucy should have just been my teacher. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you yeah. put a proviso on yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This feels like the yeah. opposite of what Lucy was trying to promote. Yeah, any right? kids listening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, just go on Lucy's website. Don't worry about your GCSEs. Yeah. Um, so if people want to follow you on Twitter and Instagram yeah, um, or Facebook or, or your website, at Dr. Lucy Rogers on. On Twitter um, and www.lucyrogers.com. And that's got all your information about the Everything. guilds. And, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Lucy. I've really enjoyed this. And, Not a problem. Yeah, really enjoyed thank it. you very much. Martian!